Um, so when the president of Mexico meets with President Biden a little bit later today, he is expected to ask if President Biden would consider sharing part of the U.S. coronavirus vaccine supply with his country. Is this something that President Biden is considering? No. Uh, the president has made clear that he is focused on ensuring that vaccines are accessible to every American. That is our focus. The next step is economic recovery, uh, and that is uh, and ensuring that our neighbors, Mexico and Canada, have similarly managed the pandemic so that we can open borders, open our borders and build back better. But our focus is on his focus, the administration's focus is on ensuring that every American is vaccinated. Uh, and once we accomplish that objective, we're happy to discuss uh, further steps beyond that. One other thing that the president of Mexico is expected to propose is an idea to bring uh, an immigrant labor, labor program to the U.S. that could bring 600 to 800,000 immigrants a year to work legally in the United States. Uh, is that something President Biden would consider? I, I've seen reports of that. I believe that's a step that would require Congress. Um, I'm sure we'll have a readout after uh, the bilateral meeting this afternoon, and they both will be speaking after it as well. Okay, and one more question about the, the strike in Syria. Uh, the Democratic Senator, Mark Warner, he said over the weekend that he really wished that the Biden administration had given Congress more of a heads up. He said, I wish the Biden team would have given Congress greater knowledge and greater warning. So given the criticism that you and other administration officials had leveled at the Trump administration uh, when they strike Syria back in 2017, why not go more out of the way to, to loop in Congress? Well, there were notifications made um, to the appropriate um, committee chairs, and uh, there, there has also been an offer of classified briefings to anyone who would like a classified briefing, and we concluded a range of notifications on Friday. Uh, in terms of uh, the strike in 2017, uh, that was a strike of, uh, that was, excuse me, that was, a, that was a, an attack uh, on, uh, on Syrian militant, military installations in response to a chemical weapons attack. This was in response to a threat and attacks that threatened the lives of uh, American men and women serving overseas. They're both different in policy and uh, legal uh, justification. And one more question from uh, former President Trump over mm -hmm. the weekend speaking at CPAC. I heard he, that. He had I heard a you quote. Spoke. <laughs> he said, President Joe Biden sold out America's children to the teachers union. How does the White House respond to that? Uh, I think we're going to do, uh, uh, spend more of our time focused on communicating about our agenda for the American people than responding to uh, criticism from uh, the former president. Um, given that the White House promised to release visitor logs, why hasn't the administration divulged who the president is meeting with virtually? I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic, isn't that kind of transparency really important? And also, wouldn't that be really easy to do? He's meeting with members of the Senate virtually today. There, I've released it for you. What else would you like to know? Names? Oh, I think we did release the names. If we haven't, we certainly have every intention of doing that this afternoon. Very good. Um, we've been talking a lot about Congress and sort of the, the log jam that, that has been. Uh, I'm wondering, is the president looking at uh, the proposal that was released by House Appropriations Chair Rosa uh, DeLora when it comes to bringing earmarks back? Is that something that I know that he's a legislator himself, but is that something that he's interested in? Maybe that could hurry along some of the agenda, or does he not have an opinion on earmarks? I, I have not discussed that with our legislative team. Obviously, as you noted, he was in the Senate for 36 years. Uh, we are Our focus right now is on the American Rescue Plan. Uh, you're familiar with all the components of that bill because we talk about it constantly from here. Uh, but. I don't have any uh, new position or a position on that particular piece of legislation. I will check and see if, if there's anything more we would like to convey. Go ahead. Senator oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Senator Warren proposed a wealth tax on households that are worth at least $50 million, saying, quote, this is money that should be invested in child care and early education, infrastructure, all of which are priorities of President Biden and Democrats in Congress. Does this president have any appetite for a wealth tax? Well, the president strongly believes that the ultra-wealthy and corporations need to finally start paying their fair share and that our economy and tax system need to reward work, not wealth. That's why he proposed making sure the very uh, richest Americans pay the same rate on the income from their wealth that a worker pays, as well as closing loopholes that allow them to entirely escape tax. Obviously, our focus is on the American Rescue Plan. 
addressing uh, the inequities in the tax code is something he talked about as part of his Build Back Better agenda and is something he remains committed to. He has a lot of respect for Senator Warren and is aligned on the goal of ensuring the ultra wealthy and big corporations finally pay their fair share. He's laid out a lot of ideas and when we get to that point in our agenda, he'll look forward to working with her and others in Congress. Go ahead. Thank you, Jen, very much. So yesterday, former President Trump suggested he might run again in, um, he will be back in 2024. You said the White House is not paying attention to, to President Trump, former President Trump, but how do you think foreign leaders are looking at this? Because this is one of the reasons foreign allies are still, uh, still have doubts and many, um, if they can trust the US again. So how do you also think President Biden can convince global uh, allies that they can trust the United States and reclaim US leadership? Well, the president, President Biden uh, just decisively beat uh, Donald Trump a few months ago. That's why we're all here, having so much fun together in here. Uh, and uh, but his focus, and I think one of the ways that he convinces foreign allies and partners that America is back and we, we want a seat at the table is by keeping his focus on his commitments he made on the campaign trail, which is building the economy back better, bringing an end to the pandemic, rebuilding our relationships around the world, and not focusing time and energy and effort on a political campaign. There's plenty of time for that, but his focus is on uh, his objectives of uh, getting the pandemic under control, working with our partners around the world to do that as well. Take into consideration that foreign allies are worried about the return of Donald Trump? I, I am not a spokesperson for our foreign partners, so you'd have to ask them and see what they have to say. Yeah, um, uh, Donald Trump last night said everybody should get their COVID-19 shot. Is that something you would welcome his intervention? And given that Republicans as a group seem rather more reluctant to get the, the coronavirus vaccination, is there more you could be doing with Republican leaders to, to bring on that group? Uh, well, it's a good question. I mean, our objective, of course, is to ensure um, as many Americans as possible uh, are vaccinated as quickly as possible. And we will have enough vaccines to vaccinate, uh, uh, ensure every American has a vaccine by the end of July, if not sooner, likely sooner. Uh, so our, at a certain point we're going to reach, uh, we will have more vaccines than there are people who want to take them. That doesn't seem like ha where we're gonna be at this point, but we will reach that point in time. And we certainly welcome the encouragement from anyone to take a vaccine.